All right. Hey, everyone. Thank you again for uh, tuning in with us tonight. Um, we have an exciting guest, Kai Frazier. Um, she's our first STEAM Spotlight uh, individual that we'll be interviewing today. We're going to do these on a regular basis. Um, individuals that are doing things in the STEM fields, um, making a name for themselves, and we want to spread the work that they're doing to um, our youth. So um, Kai Frazier, she is CEO and founder of um, Curated by Kai. She's a historian and a tech educator. And Maurice is going to read her bio here. And then I'm going to ask some questions and then uh, ask the audience uh, see if you all have questions, either yourselves or your children, and then we'll do the live giveaways. So again, thank you all for tuning in. So I'm, I'm going to pull her up on the screen now, and then I'll read her bio, okay? So uh, I'll invite her up, and you'll see it'll do like a split screen here. There we go. Hey, Kai. Okay, there, it's working good. Can you guys hear me okay? Yes, yep, we yep, can, we can hear, hear you. you. Great. So I'm going to go ahead and read your bio. So, um, so Kai is a historian and innovative educator, passionate about utilizing technology to provide inclusive opportunities and increase success, accessibility in cultural institutions for students and young adults. She is the founder and CEO of Curated by Kai, an award-winning virtual reality company which films inclusive VR as a virtual reality, field trips in museums and other cultural institutions. Through these intense outreach, um, curated by Kai delivers those experiences to students and young adults, including those in underserved communities. Um, she is an entrepreneur in residence at the Cape Port Center for Social Impact, and her work has been featured in Forbes, NBC, and the Steve Harvey Show, and more. Okay. Did your screen go out? So my screen keeps pausing a little bit. So every time it does that, I just refresh it to make sure okay. it's not okay. me just messing up stuff. Okay. Well, if it happens, we can just continue forward. Okay. okay. So, and then um, those of you all in the audience, if you have any um, tech or audio issues, just um, on the side, the chat box, just go ahead and um, plug something in and Mr. Mo handle that. And I should say too, I'm um, Erica Womack. Okay, so Kai Frazier, um, can you hear me, Kai? Oh, she's reconnecting. Uh, okay, we'll give her a second to uh, reconnect because I don't think she can hear me. He keeps freezing. A okay, bit. okay. So still hear me when it happens. You can hear me fine. Yep. Yeah, but not when you go out. So okay. Hopefully it won't won't go right. out. So Kai, tell us a little bit about uh, what you do for a living. Sure. So for a living, I am a teacher by trade um, and uh, a teacher, a researcher, and now I work in virtual reality, um, making VR productions and making sure VR gets to a lot of people who don't know it even exists. Okay. Okay. And so how did you make that jump from historian to tech educator? Can you hear me? I don't think she can. Maybe. Hey, Kai, can you hear us? Can the audience hear us? So. <laughs> okay. Because it looks like it's like Is stuck. Okay. Oh, maybe she. Okay, okay so everybody else can, can hear. Can hear us. Okay. Hey, Kai, can you hear us? It looks like it's like replaying. Okay. Can you hear us, Kai? Oh. <laughs> Maybe hey, she's trying to dial in on her phone. Okay. Can you hear us now? Yes, and I'm using my cell phone. Okay. 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 Yes, that's, we can that's hear you fine. Now. Yep. So okay. let's try. Let's get to it. So far. <laughs> okay. All right. So um, if you can drop that. So uh, no worries. No worries. Um, 
So for those that, um, cause some people did come in later. So if you can just tell again, what do you do for a living? And then how did you make that switch from historian to uh, tech educator slash entrepreneur? Sure. Sure, no problem. Apologies for all these computers that are failing me. But to answer your <laughs> question, I started off as a history. I start off as a history teacher, and I never had any interest in getting into tech whatsoever. Each day, I'm still uh, curious of how I'm in tech right now. Um, I made the transition into tech because I was really frustrated with my classroom mm. and the digital tools that I that were not working in my classroom. It was a very big digital divide where we were maybe three students to a book where a school next to me had all one to one iPads and computers for kids. Um, we were directly nearby outside of Washington, D.C., but we mm -hmm. couldn't even afford the buses to go to visit the museums, mm -hmm. even though we were 30 minutes away. Uh, so we did not, even though we were close in proximity, we were lacking in all types of access. And I couldn't figure out what was the way to bridge those gaps. I eventually went into working into some of those DC museums, and that was my first time I actually saw virtual reality. I didn't really know much about it. I just knew it could be a way to bridge the gap. And I decided that I was going to make an educational VR company knowing nothing about uh, tech or VR. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. That's awesome. They missed it. Right, right. So then what got you this out of the classroom because you could have stayed in the classroom and just you know ran your company that way would eventually led you just straight on that entrepreneurial journey and i guess you know you're still an educator but just not in that classroom space so what moved yeah along? yeah forever a teacher um i left teaching uh, in about 2014, and I left okay. to work in history museums. So I went from being a history mm -hmm. teacher to working in history museums. I worked at the um, the uh, United States Holocaust Memorial Museum in DC, and I worked at the Smithsonian National Museum of African American History and Culture. Oh, we nice. finally call it the Blacksonian, but the new African American Museum in DC. Um, and it was really great. I loved uh, seeing, uh, my job was to produce content, so I talked to, everything from genocide survivors to civil rights heroes. Um, so I kind of specialize in the darker areas of like struggle and history. Um, and I found so I learned so many new things every day and heard new perspectives. Um, and it just, I felt very guilty that I wasn't able to fully share those experiences with my students. Um, so I, so I, wanted to be an entrepreneur, which is like you're doing uh, new and innovative work within, from inside where you're working. Um, but I don't know how much you know about the federal government, uh, but they're not always up for new ideas, <laughs> things like that. So um, if I wanted to do it, I was going to have to go all in. So, you know, and starting a company also takes a lot of money, which I did not have. Um, mm -hmm. So I decided to take a really big risk. And I sold my house, my car, everything I owned. Um, then I moved across the country from Washington, D.C. to where I now live in Oakland, California, which is basically it's Silicon Valley adjacent. So I'm about 30 minutes from the heart of Silicon Valley, which would be San Jose. Um, so I could really have an up close and personal view of to learn everything I could uh, to get into this really new and challenging field. OK, OK. So there's a couple of things that you said there. You used a term. You said intra. Mm -hmm. Okay, how do you spell that? Uh, so it, it's it, like you're an entrepreneur, so you're based or intra inside of organization. So if you are maybe working in with all the tech companies out here, there are a lot of people who are tasked with um, making a new and innovative product for their um, job. So maybe like you're at Facebook, right? And you're mm -hmm. making, um, I don't know, um, Oculus or VR, things like that. So you're actually making a new tech or improving it from inside the company. So I wanted to do that working within the government. The government is just not that place to always do new and innovative ideas and things mm -hmm. like that. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, we definitely know. Mm -hmm. Maurice is well aware of that because he's still yes. working. <laughs> um, so, yeah. so entrepreneur like yeah. intranet, yes. right? I-N-T-R-A-preneur, right? Like mm -hmm. intranet. Uh, 
Uh, yes, you just, you, it's just basically you're doing it all with in, inside. So it's uh, in, it's entrepreneur, as they call yep. it. So because because there are a lot of people they consider themselves entrepreneurs as well. Mm -hmm. so. Okay, okay. Um, I never heard of the term, so <laughs> for introducing that to us. Oh yes, they really pride themselves on being yeah an entrepreneur. Okay, so um, you moved from DC to Oakland, right? Is that what you mm -hmm. said? You're in Oakland now. So what do you typically do on a day to day basis? Um, I do everything. So uh, some days I am, you know, very meeting heavy. So I'm trying to meet with people and get them to even uh, entertain the idea of, you know, using virtual reality in their world, uh, which is kind of challenging because they most of them never knew that VR was a thing. Mm -hmm. um, some days I am teaching. I'm with kids. So I have on my Hidden Genius shirt right now. This is a really big awesome organization. It's Black Girls Code and it's Hidden Genius. Yeah, so these are one of my these are two of my favorite groups. But Hidden Genius, um, they are uh, young black and brown uh, teens, and they are really tech savvy, and they teach other black and brown teens how to get into tech. Um, so uh, last week, I was working with them, teaching them VR, so they could teach other kids VR. So I visit a lot of schools and organizations like that. Um, and then probably the most exciting thing that I do is I do my VR filmings. Um, so right now, what I'm working on um, up into this phone call was I'm making making a storyboard um, for our newest VR filming. So I'm pretty sure you can't see it um, from your end, but I'm just gonna turn my computer around just in case. Um, so this is my full storyboard where I'm going through every single scene in a new VR filming. So we're gonna be filming a VR production for CRISPR, the gene editing technology mm -hmm. that's at UC Berkeley about 15 minutes from me. <laughs> so I have to go through each scene, like what do I want the kids to know? Where will we be standing? Um, what will be on the screen in the background? Who's saying what? So it's almost like making a movie. So I'm going through and um, collaborating with the scientists at UC Berkeley so we can make sure we're making a kid-friendly VR experience that can be used in classrooms. Um, and that's fun because for whatever VR experience I do, I have to go to the location because we're actually filming. Um, when you get into VR, it's really two types of VR. It's 360 filming, mm -hmm. which is when we have a camera and we're filming like a movie, or it is kind of coding. Um, so I don't do as much as the coding VR. I work mm -hmm. a little bit with it, but most of my things, because I'm a historian at trade, I don't mm -hmm. like to recreate things. Okay. So I like to go directly to the source and film so I can get uh, information from the people who are there. Okay, okay. Cool. So how do you kind of choose <laughs> or select which kind of field trips you're going to have the kids um, go through? Sure. One of my pet peeves being in Silicon Valley is I think everybody comes up with what they think people want in their head. And I'm really big at, big at uh, going directly into the communities and asking them what they want. Mm -hmm. For example, this is one of the last uh, things that I spoke at. I went to everybody. I said, please, <laughs> kids, students, teachers, write down what you want to see in the VR. And I go through, like this one is deep sea, extra, a lot of this is underwater, kids want to see underwater stuff, um, airports, they want to see what they like because they've never traveled before, um, uh, learning, just, I mean, I get different things from all over, and this is, when I take these suggestions to, um, the impact of climate change is right here, right? So when I take these suggestions to Silicon Valley and these big companies, they never, right. ever thought of these things. Um, so it's a really big disconnect. So what I try to specialize in filming is diverse and inclusive exhibitions. So the reason why I'm filming CRISPR is because that's a strong example of women in STEM. Mm -hmm. um, we don't see a lot of women in STEM, especially with just a groundbreaking um, thing like CRISPR. Um, right. And then the next thing that we're filming is we're, we are filming the, um, the uh, in Kansas City, Missouri, we'll be filming the uh, Negro Baseball League Museum for nice. their 100th anniversary. Um, so I still always have one foot in museums. Um, and that's something that the community, the, a lot of kids in Kansas City have never seen the museum and they're right next to it. And we see a lot of that. So we're filming mm -hmm. yeah. uh, different things. And I also, because I'm a teacher, I'm close to the curriculum. So if I see deep sea exploration, I go to the curriculum and see what could match that. And then I try to go ahead and start uh, drumming up support. So a lot of it is just me trying to 
hope during meetings kind of email people and say, would you please, please, please let me film this. And sometimes I get lucky. Um, we film my, one of my first VR filmings was the Obama portrait in Washington, DC. Right. And right. I was on Instagram and I, I DM the uh, painter, Amy Sherrill. And I said, Hey, I'm trying to film, but the museums are being a little bit difficult. Would you allow us to film your work to share with kids all over the world world? And she said, sure. She came back to me in three hours and said, sure. What do you need? Nice. And so it's a lot of just like shooting your shot everywhere I go. And I get lucky sometimes. Yeah, that is you're doing awesome, awesome work. I love it. So um, gonna... one day at a time, one day at a time. <laughs> hey, that's it's, how you got to awesome. do it. I mean, I, I love the fact, uh, like you said, shooting yeah. your shot, you know, um, and that kind of comes back to being an entrepreneur when you're trying to do something that people have never done. Um, you know, you can't be afraid, kids. If you're listening, you can't be afraid to shoot your shot, meaning like give it a try. Go ahead and reach out. Um, you never know. I always have kids that tell me like, well, I already know they're going to say no. And it's like you really don't know. So uh, Kai is a perfect example of that. It's like if something you kind really, of out of reach. Yeah, you really um, don't know. Yeah. Go ahead. I'll say I'll say two parts of that. You really don't know, but I also tell kids that I eat no's for breakfast. You know, like <laughs> no's are a part of the game. I maybe have to get 20 no's before right. I get a yes. Right. It's yeah. a numbers game. Um, and then two, a lot of people think I'm fearless. I'm I'm terrified every single day. <laughs> but I'm really clear to people about that. But um, you know, what the difference is is you learn how to take steps in the fear. Very seldomly will things happen that are um happen out of comfort. Mm -hmm. uh, so I tell myself that my only job is to take very tiny baby steps even every other day. And every baby step, it adds up over time. And before you know it, you'll look back and you'll see you're way ahead of everybody. And 99% of people have never taken their first step. Right. So all you have to do is get comfortable with taking very tiny steps, even when you're terrified. Definitely, definitely. And we definitely need you um, at the table, like you said, um, you know, your voice is necessary in these places where it's, you know, white male dominated a lot of times. Um, is there anything that you tell yeah. young people in terms of what they need to do now to get into a kind of career path like yours? Sure. So I uh, had, like I said, I I followed all the rules for my career path to be in history. And even doing that, it was very challenging. Um, some things that I wish I would have did differently is that even when I teach kids now, we always ask kids, what do you want to be when you grow up? Right. And I'm really seeing how terrible of a question that is to ask kids. Um, so I ask kids, you know, now when we're talking about what steps do you need to have to, you know, get into any career path, it's like, what things do you like to do? Um, and how can you do those to the best of your ability? Um, and whatever it is, ask lots of questions. Um, we don't ask, you know, I, we punish kids for asking questions. So a lot mm -hmm. of times it's just like, keep Keep digging, keep being curious, keep testing stuff up, keep trying. We don't know what's going to happen, but that's kind of the fun part. We don't know. I don't know how my days are going to end every single day, um, you know, but getting comfortable with that is one of the big skills that you will need for any career path. Um, being, um, you know, having tough enough skin to be getting no's all the time. Um, you know, I tell, I was telling somebody today about, I get about 17 no's gives me a maybe mm -hmm. and about 32 no's gives me a yes. So I had to just keep on going through this. So no matter what career you take in STEM or whether it's going to be, uh, completely not related to STEM, I think one of the biggest things that prepare you are being curious, asking questions and getting used to saying no. Um, we always, you know, beg for seats at the table, but we never think we can build our own tables. Right. Um, so also collaborating with other people and seeing what you can come up with together. Okay. All right. So you mentioned asking questions. So we'll open it up now for some of the families to ask questions. If you all have um, a question that you'd like to ask, um, I guess in the chat box, you want them to just yeah. say me or I have a question, just type it in there. And then we, if you're comfortable with it, we will, can we take us off the screen and add them? Uh, I'm not sure. I don't think so. so we'll just ask the question. Oh, yeah, we'll so, have to ask So drop a question, a question okay. in the chat box if you have one there. I thought we can um, show you guys. Yeah, we'll. I just want to make sure because we had connection problems earlier that we don't run into that if we take Oh, off, okay. So, um, okay. So, oh yeah, God, that was all me. Uh, <laughs> yeah, no worries. 
while you're yeah. getting questions, yes, while you're getting questions, I just wanted to, I'm going through the questions you sent me and I wanted to touch on one thing that we did it. That's my fault because of my head tech problems, but you have a question that was, what was my earliest time that I wanted to get into STEM? Like what's my earliest memory of wanting to get into tech and STEM? And I want to be really clear that um, I never had, my earliest memory that I can think of is wanting to get into astronomy. I really liked mm. uh, the stars and going to the planetarium and I, you couldn't tell me nothing. I thought I was going to do that when I was in about seventh grade, but I was terrible at math. And my math teacher, I mean, my, excuse me, my science teacher told me that I would not be able to do um, astronomy because it involved quantum physics and a lot of math. And that's where I stopped. So I remember stopping all science in seventh grade because I had a teacher tell me that I couldn't do it because I was bad at math. Um, when I, now that I'm doing this CRISPR uh, researching of the Berkeley scientists, I told them that story and they all looked at me and said, we don't do much math. What are you talking about? <laughs> and I always think about yeah. how, what my STEM career path could have been if I didn't have somebody who I really looked up to tell me that I couldn't do mm -hmm. it. Um, so no matter, you know, you can always learn new skills. You're going to, mm -hmm. in your entire life, you're learning new skills. Um, so there's an opportunity to do whatever you want to. Never in a million years that I think from teaching history, I would be like traveling all over, like basically making mini movies, immersive movies in VR. Um, that was never in my cars. Or maybe it was, I just didn't see it. So I just want to say like, whatever you want to do, there is a path to do it regardless of what anybody says. Right. Not letting teachers dim your light. Absolutely. And, and, and to second what you're saying, I'm an engineer and we don't use math on a daily basis like that either. Um, it's more conceptual, you know, okay. we definitely have to you know, kind of go through that process and understand how math works. But as far as day to day activities, we, we definitely don't don't engage in math uh, all that much. But um, so we got a question here. Um, it's a good one. Wait, so, wait a minute. We, yeah. so Brittany asked, um, is it only schools that can access your VR or is it accessible to everyone? And she says she loves it. That's a really great question, Brittany. So I work really hard to make sure our VR is ex as, as accessible as possible. Um, not going too deep into it, we make web VR, which means if there is a web browser, you can use it. That means on your phone, that means on your iPad, on your desktop, because you can also watch 360 videos on a desktop as opposed to um, in an actual headset. And it will also work on any headset because most of the headsets have, or all of them have a web browser on them. Mm -hmm. um, that's very different because uh, most VR headset or most VR experiences only work on a particular headset. So maybe there's a really cool LeBron James VR experience you like, but it's only available on Facebook's Oculus Quest. That means you can't watch it on the phone, you can't watch it on your desktop, or iPad. So we make sure that our stuff is accessible from all over. You can go to our site, go to our VR catalog, and right now everything is free. You can go check it out. This is what we call our MVP, our uh, minimal viable product. So what's the basic thing we can make mm -hmm. to see if there's an interest? Um, when we hit 2020, we'll be revamping our platform so kids can not only uh, watch and explore VR, they can also um, uh, make VR. So we've been doing a collaboration with Mozilla this whole year to kind of make a platform where kids can drag and drop VR. So they don't need, they don't even need coding to do VR. Okay. Um, and then they can get into HTML coding to make a web VR. So we're making sure we have a stepping stone so kids can actually get into this field and take over and dominate it. Nice. Wow, I love that's that. great. Yeah. And, and if you're not familiar with uh, Mozilla, they actually, they make the Firefox web browser. So your parents probably are familiar with them. So a very large organization. So it sounds like you're working with a lot of the heavy hitters in Silicon Valley. So that's great. So, um, yeah. Oh, go ahead. Yeah. Can you tell us the, the your web address so we'll put that it. families can visit? Yeah. Sure. Sure. My website is www.curated, the letter X, Kai, K A I. So curated X Kai, um, curated by Kai is what we call it. Uh, curated X Kai.com. Um, and you can see all of our stuff. If you go to our website, there is I think a tab that says bring VR to your world. You'll see we have fifth grade and under VR experiences. We have all of our VR experiences. There's about 50 on the site right now. Um, and just spoiler alert, as of 2020, we are uh, pivoting our companies. We're making a change and we will be um, 
rebranded as Kai XR. XR stands for mixed reality, the X, the unknown. Um, so when we get into augmented reality, virtual reality, and whatever else may be invented that we don't know about, that's the X. So we're going to be Kai XR to get into all types of mixed reality. Nice, nice. And then if you guys um, check out her website, you see, like she said, a variety of different VR experiences, even like Disney on there for like the really young kids and then science and then the museum experiences as well. Um, yes. Another question. And all you have to do is make a login. Uh, oh, yeah. Okay. Free login. So all free. OK. Free login. And then you can go in the <laughs> Um, another question, do you know of any summer programs um, for middle or high schoolers that are related to VR or coding? And I don't know. Um, yes, yeah, so I have, I, I think what I would tell you is just kind of more location based. I know you guys are out in Ohio. I'm out here in the Bay and like San Francisco yeah. Bay area. Yeah. Um, so I find STEM programs every day out here from, mm -hmm. from the Hidden Genius Project, which I'm wearing right now, to Black Girls Code is out here with us and to everything in between. Mm -hmm. um, so, but we also do STEM programs. Um, what we have on our site that we are redesigning right now is our VR STEM kits. So we also mm -hmm. have groups who maybe have their own STEM summer camp and they want to order our STEM kits to kind of have their own week-long VR STEM kit. Um, so we're gonna be working on that too um, this spring so they'll be ready for summer. Okay, okay. And I forgot to mention that question was from um, the Bradshaw family. And then from um, BHG, um, oh, she was just saying um, her daughters are fan girls of your work now. Um, and then you, this Yay, is all from the Bradshaw it. family. Do you facilitate any summer programs yourself? Or are you always just working with other uh, groups? So I have found it easier as a small business for me to jump on other people's mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. uh, programs because it allows me to get uh, it allows me to get to different areas, different locations, so I can jump. If I was doing my own program, it would do a lot of work. We would probably run it like maybe one week, one month, and it's over. But instead, I'm able to go to Ohio, and do a training, go to uh, San Jose, and do a training, go to Chicago, and do a training, go to Atlanta. So I kind of jump on um, and uh, travel a lot just so I can make touch points, even doing things like this um, so we can have um, digital trainings. And then one thing that I'm really looking forward to is with our new platform, you can do virtual trainings. So you can put a headset on and be at a summer camp um, and, yeah. and listen and do things like that. So we're trying to make all of these opportunities more accessible than, um, you know, like it's, it's, I can very easily do my own camp, but that's not solving the problem that I saw every single day. It's how do we make everything accessible? So no matter where you are, you can have top quality uh, VR entry points so you can have your own career, make your own business in anything in STEM past VR. Definitely, definitely. Um, okay, and then Colleen, um, that you know. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't have yes. any questions, but he loves your the session and your energy. <laughs> so, so, so thank I, you, I Tom. So, so I've got I've go, go okay. ahead. Yeah, what's your question? Oh, um, I, I can't leave. Oh, without, no, I was just saying, I've never been to Ohio, so I've got to go. Yes, yeah, Columbus, please come. So, 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 I mean, we're gonna get to. We got a couple uh, headsets, cardboard BR cardboard headsets to give out from Kai, um, but. I, I noticed your branding, Kai, and, and I'm looking at you now, and I noticed the vibrant hair. So tell us kind of how, how that came about. Is that something that you uh, is part of your branding and, and who you are and why? <laughs> you want the real story? <laughs> hey, hey, give us I the real. Tell you, I would tell you the... Uh... I'll tell you the real story. I apologize, kids. I'm 
when I divorced my ex-husband a couple of years ago, I was like, I want to do something different. I want to change my hair. You know, they always say when a, a woman changes her hair, she's big changes are coming. And mm, once yeah. I dyed my hair, I <laughs> just got a little bit bolder to ask questions and do a lot of these things and okay. uh, try new things. But I'm glad you brought that up. I'm just going to turn my screen a little bit so you can hopefully you can see my screen. Oh, let me see if you can Ooh, like see that. this. We're actually changing yeah. our branding now. Okay. So now you can see we're having all these different diverse kids into yeah. VR. So you won't get to see my hair anymore, um, but you'll still see co super cool, right. bright things. And Beautiful. this is, we're going to, um, like I said, Pi XR will be our mm -hmm. new um, logo and everything. So we are changing so we can scale. Um, when I started my company, I thought I was going to curate diverse VR exhibitions. So it's curated by Kai. And mm -hmm. we have changed to so many different things now. And so we are just completely changing our branding for 2020. Okay. All right. Well, Kai, um, you know, I haven't met you in person, but Maurice has had glowing things to say about you and you were just wonderful um, this this evening. I'm a real fan of yours for sure. And um, I thank you. Thank that, you for dealing with the tech issues. Apologies for that. Oh, no, no, no. Um, it's not a problem at all. We appreciate you taking the time um, out of your day. I know it's 510 there, so you probably have to get a little more work in yeah. where it's evening, you know, for us. But um, definitely yeah. appreciate you taking the time um, out of your busy schedule to talk to um, our families here. And um, we're going to give away two, your two um, headsets to two different uh, families. So I didn't know if you wanted to stay on or not. Um, it's up to you. But um, if you need to sign off, we definitely. Oh, I would love to. No, no. It's the what? only thing I have next is we have our full team meeting. We just got accepted oh. into an accelerator out of Atlanta. So we're just prepping everybody for the changes that are going to come because it's going to be our first cash injection that we've ever had oh wow oh, nice. and get nice. to the little place. Like, we can get to ohio thank you grow our company wonderful. and the way we want it to yeah so but no i would love to watch so okay <laughs> go all for right. it. okay so um so we've got we've got all the names that we put into this uh the name picker here online so uh -huh. on my other computer here so I got everybody name, everybody's name in there, I believe, who's signed on. Yes. Um, so I'm just gonna hit the button here and it's gonna pull up a name. Let me see. If, uh... Okay, so we're gonna give two of them away. Okay, you have a few of people that um, I was gonna tell you to take them. Well, we'll see if they're yeah, yeah. So okay, so here we go. <clears throat> All right. It's running. Okay, our first so women, she's, she's are they on here? On, Wait a minute. There. This person's not on there. They just have register. Okay. Yeah, so we'll, we'll do it again. <laughs> okay. Pick another, it says pick okay. another name. Yep. Okay. And then start. All right. Give us a second. Okay. All right. Uh, so, Edmund Davidson. Congratulations. You congratulations. Have one of, um, Kai's uh headset so this is uh if you're not familiar with the google cardboard headsets <clears throat> um these allow you to take your smartphone put them in here uh and then visit uh the the 360 videos that mm -hmm. kai makes as well as other vr experiences download apps and so forth so these are already pre-made they're they're uh very durable but they allow really anybody to come up to speed and, and be able to experience vr very quickly uh in a good way so that's that goes to uh, Edmund Davidson. So congratulations uh, to you and your family. We'll get that to you. So definitely uh, uh, reach out to us. So yeah, <laughs> give them a hand. And then so we'll do another one here one for the second one. Okay. Um, so we'll run this. All right. And let me let me see if this person's online right now. Nope, they're not online. Okay, so we're running it again. One more. So this is good for everybody. You get another opportunity. <laughs> so Brittany. So I think that's that's uh, is that Ken, the Barneses, Brittany? Yeah, I think so. That's that's Brittany. Is that? Yeah, that's yeah. So, so Candace, Brittany Barnes, Brooklyn. I think that's their family, right? 
Is so. it? Okay. If you all can say, um, Brittany, if that's you, off to the side, just type something so we know. Okay. And then, so congratulations to you. Okay, they said yes. Okay, yeah, I thought that's who it was. So, yeah, so, um, yeah, so congratulations to the to the winners of those VR headsets. Definitely uh, to Edmund, Edmund, Edmund in, in, uh, in the Barneses. So in the Barneses. Um, appreciate you tuning, tuning in. So if you haven't already done so, I know we're doing this on the Crowdcast platform, but we have the online uh, STEM club, which is uh, Club Oasis. So if you go to that website, I'll put the link there. If you haven't signed up there, make sure you go there and sign up. So our goal is really at some point to take all of this and keep it on the website so that people can interact there on the website. So definitely thanks for tuning in. We got another couple more announcements. And Kai, feel free. I know you're busy. If you need to sign off, then you can go ahead and do that. So I, I'm over here multitasking. Okay. <laughs> <You're like over. laughs> um, and then I need that uh, sheet of paper because we were in the middle of uh, telling you guys uh, the announcements. So Tech and Touch this Sunday, um, December 15th, I believe, um, 1 p.m. to 2.30, the MLK Library will be there with um, – some of our gadgets um, that the kids can try out for free. Um, also, Wakanda Tech Academy, if you haven't seen um, that on social media or at the Club Oasis website, that's for fifth through eighth graders. And there um, we'll be doing it once a month starting January 2020. And uh, the focus is technology, entrepreneurship, entrepreneurship, culture, and history. So we'll be linking um, African-American uh, cultural moments, individuals, so on and so forth to technology and entrepreneurship. So yep. anything? Um, I think that's did, you it, the, did you put the... Uh, okay. So um, again, thank you all for uh, tuning in. Maurice is about to put up Mr. Mo. He's putting up um, our website, which is social.oasismatters.com. You can go there, get more information about our, our events, STEAM spotlights, like what we had here with um, Kai tonight, um, Wakanda Tech, other events we do. Um, it's just a community. It's a free online STEM, STEM club for uh, your children, or if you work with kids, um, go there and um, you can get all kind of resources. So thank you all so much. Kai, thank you again. Um, you are phenomenal. Thank you for having me. You are pheno a phenomenal woman. <laughs> so we thank definitely you. appreciate it. Thank you guys. You. I appreciate it. Thank you. All right, you all. Till next time. Thank you. Bye, Kai. Mm -hmm.